Okay guys, welcome to the show. We are gonna go over stats. This is gonna be complete bull shark. We're gonna go over bull shark stats. Uh, same way we broke down the tiger shark stats, not as many as the great white, of course. We've gone over 50 of these so far. So we'll break down the same way that we did with the tiger sharks right after this intro. I hope you stick around. Okay, the bull sharks. Uh, the overall bull sharks, we've covered 50 attacks so far, and that is just the ones that have been identified as bull sharks. There's one that I'm probably going to add to this, and one that I'm probably going to change to a great white. We've talked about the one that I'm going to change to a great white, but I'll bring that up again when we get to it. Uh, I do have one that I'm probably going to take and throw in here as a bull shark. I always bring up, uh, when I think of... Uh, you know, terrible attacks. Um, bull sharks, the ones that come to mind to me are uh, Zeta Stedman. Um, she was bitten in half by a 13 footer. Then you have, uh, of course, I always bring up Frederick Bergstaller. He was in the water swimming and a bull shark came and attacked him, a nine footer. And the first thing he did was try to fight the shark off while he went ahead and tried to punch the shark as he fell back after he was attacked. The shark bit his lower body. It's the first thing it did when it attacked him. He went to punch the shark and his arm went right in the shark's mouth and it bit his arm off. Now he's collapsed in the water and he's floating out further out to sea. And the lifesavers say he was alive for about 20 minutes. You could see his head bobbing up and down as he's trying to swim back with just one arm. By the time the boat got out to, to rescue him, most of his lower body was gone. And uh, it's very likely that would have happened in that first bite. And then he would, just, you know, tried to punch the shark and then psh, took his arm too. Either way, he was alive for a while after that. And then there's uh, the one that I couldn't think of the name that I bring up along with that to where they kind of try to fight the shark off and it does not work. And this is John Nichols. And John Nichols is the one that was grabbed by the shark and it dragged him into deeper water where multiple fins met up on him. The witnesses saw the fins converge on him and they found parts of his body in three different beaches that, after that attack. That one, I think, uh, is a bull shark. I mean, um, tiger sharks did it to Jordan Lindsay, but that is so rare for tiger sharks to attack like that, unless you're diving with them, and then one of them decides to bite you and some kind of a frenzy uh, happens with hungry sharks and blood in the water. I don't think that that does happen, or they wouldn't do that. But anyway, uh, that's it. We've had 50 attacks. 22 have been fatal, 44%. So a lower percentage than the tiger shark that we've covered so far that's been identified as that shark. They're at 44 the, out of 50 attacks, 44%, so 22. The tiger shark was at 56% with 68 attacks, I believe what it was, and the great white was around 36% fatal, uh, and we've gone over 206 attacks. So 44% falls right in between the great white, which is the low end, and the tiger, which is the high end. 42% of the time, the tiger, uh, the bull shark tries to go ahead and consume the person. That's higher than the other two. Um, I believe it's 25% for the, the tiger shark. It's about 20% for the great white so far in what we've covered. This is double. So 21 of the... 22 fatalities, 21 they've tried to eat the person. And the thing is, is the fatalities aren't all the ones that they tried to eat them. Some of these survivors were tempted to be eaten, kind of like I have for the great white uh, Heather Boswell down as an attempt to predate, even though she survived, she lost her leg, but I'm of the mind that that shark was gonna take her with it. Um, so that's the overall attacks and these stats that we're going through right now are just going to be overall in the attacks that we've covered worldwide. Uh, less than 10 feet, so smaller than 10 feet sharks, we've covered 16 attacks. So 16 of the sharks have been identified as being under 10 feet out of 50. 32% uh, have been, uh, that's 32% of the attacks are under 10 feet. And then 
over 10 feet, 10 of them with 20% over 10 feet, but we are missing half of the attacks as far as the size of the shark. So it's impossible to make any kind of judgment going by those numbers with half of the numbers missing because we don't know what size the shark was, not even an estimate. Uh, 29 have been in the afternoon, 11 have been in the morning. So that's over half of them have been in the afternoon and right now only 22% in the morning. Now again, we're missing 19 uh, day, times of day on these attacks. So it seems to be heavily weighted to the PM though on these bull shark attacks, at least by what we have. Again, we're missing too much to make any definitive anything, missing a quarter of what you need as far as stats. Okay, the attack depth, three feet or less, there's been 14. The 50, 50 attacks by bull sharks we have covered, 14 of them have been in three foot or less water. Um, seven were fatal, so half of them were fatal in three feet or less water. And eight times they tried to consume. So somebody, and I think that is, uh, no, that's not Diego, the one from... Uh, the one from Florida. That's an attempt to predate, I know, but I know she didn't survive, unfortunately. But there's somebody in there that survived an attempt to predate, because there's one more attempt to predate by sharks in three feet or less water than there are fatalities by them. But 50% and 55% for fatality rate and, and attempt to consume is huge. Uh, very high, especially for such shallow water. Uh, from just over three feet to six feet of water, there's been seven out of the 50. Four of those have been fatal. Again, we're above 50%. The other one was right on 50%. So now we're above 50% in water, less than six feet, by uh, these bull sharks that we've covered worldwide that we have stats on. Um, so six feet or less, you've got a 50-50 chance of surviving the shark. Four of them were attempts to consume there, so it seems if the shark is going to attack you, it's probably going to try to eat you in six feet or less water um, as much as it's going to cause a fatality, that is. Uh, you know, it's half of 55% of the time in six feet or less water, the shark tries to eat you when you run into a bull shark. And now six to ten feet of water we've covered two and none have been fatal and one one was an attempt to consume so uh, who knows what it was a surfer or who it was but they ended up surviving luckily and then we have ten foot plus um, there's been five attacks by bull sharks that we've covered in ten feet or more water um, one has been fatal but like I said, that one is probably going to be moved over to a great white, so it's going to leave zero in 10 feet or deeper water that we've covered so far. Um, one person was bitten in half. That was Zeta Stedman by a 13-foot tiger shark, and that's one uh, bull shark. That's one of the biggest bull shark attacks I, I know of. I've heard of 11-footers, but that 13-footer, that's still the record is, that I know of as far as the shark that's attacked somebody. Um, 11 victims had something severed in their attacks. So that's 22%. The tiger was at 33% in 68 attacks, and this is 11 out of 50 attacks at 22%. So again, that tiger shark is going to take something with it more. Um, and that's p most likely why right now, out of the attacks that we've covered, it has a much higher uh, fatality rate is because of the severing of things. Less than 100 yards from shore, so 300 feet and closer or 90 meters and closer, uh, 17 of the attacks, of the 50 attacks, have been in that range. Um, 100 to 200 yards, um, nine of them were fatal, so half of the ones inside of 100 yards were fatal out of the 17. Uh, 100 to 200 yards, we have one fatality, no attempts to consume. I, I'm sorry, one attack, no fatality. 200 yards to a meter, but to a mile, we have one attack, no, att no fatality. And one mile plus, we have four and zero fatalities. And uh, I dropped that down to zero fatalities because I know I'm going to move William Colbert over to a great white shark. 
and we'll go over why. Uh, part of the stuff that I'll tell you why when we get to there. But uh, we're going to break this down by, by country now, like we did with the other ones. And the USA, once again, leads the way in bull shark attacks with 20. So 50 we've covered, 20 of them are from the U.S. Uh, four were fatal, 20%. So the U.S. runs less than half of the overall fatality rate in attacks from bull sharks. Um, that's standard throughout everything. And, uh, you know, maybe it is that people get out of the water quicker over here. They're, they're in the water with more people when they're attacked by these sharks. I, it's awfully strange that they're so low. I don't put it to that um, we're more medically advanced because these attacks that are happening off the shores that are survived, most of them aren't so bad like the ones I just talked about with John Nichols, with, with you know, uh, Colbert. And then the other one that I know of in the U.S. that was really bad was uh, Diego, and I can't remember her first name. I think they had it listed as three names, and Diego's her last name, 14 or 15 years old, and she was in between sandbars, and a bull shark got a hold of her. That's the worst one that I, I'm aware of as far as an attempt to predate off of U.S. shores. Um, but there has been five attempts to predate off, UF shore, off the U.S. shores. So 20% uh, of the 20 attacks are fatal. 25% of the time, they try to eat you. So one out of five, uh, one out of four times, the bull sharks off the USA will try to consume you. Uh, swimming made up half of the attacks, 10 of them. Uh, two were fatal. That's 20% right in line, right on the number with their uh, overall. And then three attempts to predate. So one out of three times, or I mean, uh, yeah, three out of ten times, so 33% of the time, or one out of three times, the shark, bull shark will try to consume you in that situation. Surfers, five attacks on surfers, one fatality, and it was an attempt to consume. Um, so that's 20% uh, fatality rate on surfers, 20% attempt to consume on surfers by the bull shark. Uh, spear fishermen, three attacks, zero fatalities, zero attempts to predate. So now we've gone through the tiger. We've gone through the bull and we've gone through the great white and we've gone into, I think now, a couple dozen um, attacks on spear fishermen by the great white, zero fatalities in the U.S. waters. Or maybe it wasn't a couple dozen, maybe it was about a dozen. But it's kind of shocking that there's no fatalities and no attempts to predate by any of the big three on spear fishermen in the U.S. because it's a much different story in other places. Um, so that's that. Kiteboarding, there was an attack that was fatal and it, it was an attempt to consume. Uh, scuba diving, same thing. One attack, one fatality, and one attempt to consume. But that is being moved. That's the William Colbert attack. And what I had noticed is, like I said, these are territorial attacks the further out you get from shallow water. You run into these sharks in shallow water, and now it's starting to show up in the stats on just what we covered so far, that you're a lot worse off with a bull shark near shore than you are getting into deeper water with one. Um, for the U.S., 12 of the attacks have been by sharks, bull sharks under 10 feet, while four of them have been over 10 feet, so that's 16 of the 20 attacks, so that leaves four sharks. If they're all four over 10 feet, they're almost e equal. I would say they're probably um, under, and the only reason why is because the bull shark max is out at, at 13 feet, and so you probably have most of your bull sharks on the large size around 10, 11 feet, and then you'll get those 12, 13 footers would be like a 19, 20 foot great white or a 18, 17 foot tiger. Just huge for what they are and low in numbers being that size, if that makes sense. <laughs> so that's the USA. Now we get into number two, which is again Australia. And they've been number two to the US in all these attacks, but they're much worse attacks over there. And this, this will show it. Uh, 10 total attacks, half of what we've covered in the US. Seven have been fatal. 70% of bull shark attacks that we've covered over in Australia, fatal. 56% for the great white, and I think it was about the same for the tiger. So it's just astronomically worse in Australia 
with these shark attacks than it is with the same species, the same sizes here in the U.S. Um, four attempts to predate, so you're talking 40% of the time, almost one out of two times it's going to try to eat you, the bull shark over there in their waters rather than over in our waters, where it's 20% both of those, 70% fatality there, 40% uh, attempt to predate. Just bad numbers. Swimmers, six of them were on swimmers out of the 10, five were fatal, two attempts to predate. Uh, standing, wading in water, I put those both together because if you're wading out you might be, you know, neck deep in water, but you're still kind of standing. So if it would have said treading water, then you're kind of, then I would have put it swimming. That's the break on those. Um, two attacks on them, two fatal, and two attempts to consume. So 100% across the board with standing in the water. So at least be swimming, because one of those people out of the six survived, whereas both of the people standing did not. Um, spear fishermen, one attack on spear fishermen there in Australia. No fatalities, no attempt to consume. Diving, one attack, no fatality, no attempt to consume. So again, closer to shore, you're in trouble. Further out, it doesn't seem so much. It's going to be territorial is what I'm saying. I mean, I, you know, I see a lot of it for it to stand out like that as I'm just going through the attacks. Uh, South Africa comes in next, and they got half of what Australia did at five, but they are tied for third. And uh, Ray Union pulls in tied for third with, with uh, South Africa. So we got stats for both of those, and they'll be quick. Um, I don't want to bore you with stats through all this thing, but we are going to have a breakdown of some other species coming up. Um, Mako, I'm definitely going to go through, and I might do them all three in one episode because the attacks will be a lot lower. Uh, the Mako, the Bronze Whaler, the Oceanic White Tip, those three definitely need to be covered throughout the stats. Um, I would say that those are the three most dangerous sharks to people after the big three. And those six we're going to keep a close eye on throughout the show. Um, five attacks in South Africa, four fatal, and all four they tried to, well, four they tried to eat the person. The thing there is, is some of these attacks, the person is fa it's fatal but they didn't try to consume. And then another one, the person survives but the shark was trying to consume them. This is what the attempt to consume is doing here. It's showing that even when it's fatal, it's not always what their intention is. Uh, two were on swimmers, almost half, five, two. Um, one was fatal, but two were attempted to consume. So that second person, the shark, wanted to eat them also, but did not do so. They survived. Uh, uh, yeah, they survived, only one fatality. One surfer, one spear fisherman, and one person standing, and the surfer and the, and the standing, both fatal, spear fisherman, not. So, <laughs> this spear fishing thing, for all the attacks we go over, and these people have bloody fish with them, which <laughs> is going to attract sharks. There ain't a lot of fatalities. There <laughs> definitely isn't a lot of attempts to consume. That's all over by the shores. So, uh, this is the interesting thing that popped up with these five attacks there. Four of them happened between the hour of four and five o'clock, or three and four p.m. Four of the five attacks there were between three and four p.m. that we've covered. The other one says midday, so that could be right in that slot right there too. So maybe not swim between three and four over there in South Africa. Okay, now, Ray Union Island, uh, five total attacks. Um, but it's better for these attacks than it is in South Africa. Only two fatalities and two attempts to consume. So you go from a 80% to a 40% as far as fatalities and attempts to consume. Uh, the difference between South Africa and Ray Union. Ray Union, four of them were on surfers. One of those were fatal and an attempt to consume on one of them. Uh, one swimmer was a fatality and an attempt to consume or a consumption. So that will bring us up to date on these shark attacks. Mozambique came in with two. Um, New Caledonia came in with two. And then there's a slew of them. Bahamas, Mexico, Panama, uh, Cuba with one that fall in there. So the, we're updated on the, on the great white, the tiger, and um, the bull shark. Uh, 
I'm probably not gonna go through and try to nail anything down right now, we're gonna have to go through, get to at least a thousand attacks. And once we're at a thousand attacks, we will have covered as many attacks as there were um, available for H. David Baldrich back in the late 60s when he was running the international shark attack file. There was only 1,100 attacks, and since the 60s it's gone up, and that's due to people going in the, going in the water more, and, and I'm sure due to reporting starting to pick up. Um, I think attacks were happening pretty badly back in the day, you know, the early 1900s or even before that were never talked about, never reported, nobody ever knows about them. And how would you? So uh, who knows how many of that was? But you know the attacks nowadays seem to be, you know, pretty much stable in number year to year. We had a bad year a few years back with like 120 total attacks. But they're putting in a bites to kayaks, uh, you know, bites to boats. Um, and I think they put that in there as watercraft or something else, but they put in valid attacks in there, which some of them are uh, like we've gone through. I've at least a dozen of their drownings I've overruled and put in as, uh, as fatalities. Not all of them, there's a couple of them that I'll keep in there. And here's the thing with that, and this is the deal with the William Colvert thing, and you'll see it in there in, in these attacks. You run into one of these bull sharks, especially a six, seven footer, even that nine footer. I think the uh, one was nine foot on, on Bergstaller, but I think the one that grabbed on to, uh, Mr. John Nichols and dragged him out into deeper water, was just a six, seven foot bull shark took him out there. But they don't, they don't uh, identify the species. But that's what a bull shark's gonna do usually when you're near shore, it's gonna try to drag you off. Um, my theory is with the tiger and the bull shark, they're usually, unless you're in the shallows, they're gonna take care of their business where they're at. Um, sadly, we saw that with pop off deep enough water, they don't need to take you out there to where they need to do what they need to do. As long as they can swim around like they want to, I think they're fine. It's the great white that grabs these people and takes them off and does what they do with them somewhere else. And we go over these and you know we went over the one with the, person's gear is all scattered right where they disappeared, scattered everywhere right there, and the person is gone, and then that lionfish expert, because he is a marine biologist, overruled <laughs> what the Coast Guard uh, said that they had found, that that's definitely a shark you know, scene. That's an attack scene, and yes it is, and it's a great white scene. Uh, Jonathan Lee was his name, I do believe. That's the guy that was grabbed and shook so hard that his buddy thought it was train in the water behind him. He hid behind the rock and saw the shark swim off with his buddy. Oh, his gear was gone and everything. That shake gets rid of that. And then they take you away. Uh, I don't know that any other sharks grab you and take you to wherever they want to do. Great whites seem to do it all the time in these test bites where the guy is sitting there and one guy's going down the dive rope, I remember, and he says that his, you know, because his legs are up above him, he's pulling himself down, and he felt like his legs were caught up in kelp and he was being dragged off, and he looked and he was in the mouth of a 15-foot great white. I think that's what could happen if these people don't fight back right there. You never know if that shark's going to take you away and decide to consume you later, but Luckily for them, I believe that guy grabbed onto the gills and pulled on those and it released him and didn't bother him again. So those test bites, I really do wonder what the shark is thinking afterwards and uh, it's a good thing that some of these people don't find out. So that's our show for today. That's our, our uh, stats on these, these big three sharks. We will cover the, the other three sharks, which I consider uh, the, the other most dangerous sharks to humans, but I do not consider them man-eaters. Uh, the closest I would think to being one would be the, the oceanic white tip. And let me tell you, if people were around that shark, like run into them, not, not in, not in, not in the, the, the stage where you're diving with them, a bunch of people bubbles diving, 
uh, it, it puts these sharks on edge. These people are not in the natural element with a natural acting shark. The sharks, it's like if you're in a cage, same thing. The shark is not acting like it's normally going to act if you're in that cage, if you're not in that cage. I think if you're not in the cage, the shark's either going to show interest in you or just go away and not care, but you're in the cage and they're trying to keep them there and they sit there and do what they do to keep the sharks there to see them. But I think if you're unfortunate enough to run into one of those oceanic white tips in a place that it would usually not be, let's say, Sharm El Sheikh, all those uh, attacks by them. There's got to be a big drop off there for that to happen. But it doesn't have to be very deep water. I mean, you go back to Rodney Temple being pieced off by those oceanic white tips. And he was, I think the, f the floor of the, the drop off was 120, where they were, the top ledge was 120 feet. So they were, if I remember correctly, they were swimming along that and they saw the two oceanic white tips come up over that ledge from the drop off. And that's when he lost sight of, uh, when, uh, was his name Jared Lehrer? No, that must be from the other one. But the, his mate didn't, couldn't see him and he heard all the noise from the attack going on from both of the oceanic white tips. So I would call an oceanic white tip a man eater along with the top three. Um, but you know, that just means that they can and sometimes do eat men and it's not man eater in the type that they're going around looking for people to eat. And uh, I probably will do my Jaws episode so that we can put a fork in rogue sharks forever. And uh, until then, I'm going to get into the, the Mako, the Oceanic White Tip, and the Bronze Whaler at, probably after another attack show that I'll get ready after that, after this one. So i uh, caught up on the big three, and I will see you in a f two to three days with another attack show. But remember, if it's warm enough and you're going into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.